Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. I am Kayla, otherwise known as Let's Get Knit Face, and I'm so excited to show you guys how to make these lovely fingerless mittens. Alright, so let's get right into it. This is our finished product. Just to show you guys, we have some ribbing here at the bottom at the top to symbolize a cuff, and we also have a little bit at the top of the thumb with some plain knit stitch in the middle. It's a very beautiful mitten, and I would say this would fit um, you know, immediate, like small, medium, it's very stretchy. I have very small hands, I would say, and it fits me nice and there's some room. Um, if you have very large hands, I, there is a modification that I will post in the description. It's just a couple more stitches to cast on, a couple more stitches to increase for the thumb, but I would say this fits most adult hands. What you're going to need is four double pointed needles in the size two or three. These are two. Um, but you could work for either you're just going to want to um, either could work you're just going to want to check your gauge um, with your yarn you're going to want 24 stitches to equal about four inches and to get that the weight you're going to want to use is the number two um, so this category is sometimes called fine or baby or sport this one's um, uh, this one is sport weight so Again, I checked my gauge, and the two is going to work out better for me, so I'm ready to cast on with my four needles. And how I'm going to do that is I'm just going to create a slip knot, make kind of an A, hold it with your finger. You're going to twist, you're going to pull through and grab the working side to make your first cast on stitch. And then you just pop that on your needle, tighten her up, and leave a, leave a decent amount here at the end. Um, just to kind of make sure your work stays in place. And now we're gonna cast on. So we're gonna cast on 48 stitches onto three needles. This is gonna be your working needle. You're always gonna be knitting with one while the rest of your stitches stay on three needles. You're gonna cast on 48, so that means 16 on each needle. And I like to cast on just by twirling the working yarn around my thumb in the same direction we are going. Let's see, this is counterclockwise. Um, and you're just gonna slide that right off onto the needle. You're gonna do that 16 times. Some people like to cast on um, by doing it all on the same needle. So they just cast on 48 stitches right onto this needle right now and then move them over. I'm not a huge fan of that because I don't like moving these tiny little stitches off these tiny needles onto another tiny needle. So if you're with me there, just follow my lead here as I cast on my stitches. And you'll see it's really just a nothing revolutionary. You're just gonna cast on the stitches directly onto the next needle. I've lost count. Um, so four, four, four. I have an extra there, so let's pop him off. There's 16 right there. See, they're very tiny, so it's hard to keep track of. You gotta make sure that you're up on them needles or them stitches. Okay, so now I'm just gonna hold this one directly over where I left off and again, cast on, moving the yarns around your finger and you're gonna cast on again 16 stitches. Just like so. One more. Okay, moving over to our third and final needle. We will need 16 more. Let's cast them on. Watch how fast I can do this. Oh my gosh, wasn't that so fast? Okay, so 16 on three needles brings us to a grand total of 48. How lovely. Now, the first row, I'm going to be honest with you, is the toughest. I don't want to lie to you, knitting fam. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take it slow, and we're going to make it through it together. Because once you get past this first row, it's all downhill from there. So, we're going to turn our knitting to the inside, okay? We're going to have this, this little ridge of extra yarn, or like where the twist came from, facing the inside. And that always needs to be the case this first few rows, up until you don't really have anything coming out of your yarn yet. Um, it'll help you keep organized and help your yarn from getting twisted. So, let's get started with our ribbing. We're gonna start with our slip knot, and in order to get this ribbing, we're gonna knit one, and we're gonna purl one. And then we're gonna knit, purl, knit, purl, knit, purl. But in order to get this beautiful, popped out, knitted look, we're gonna have to knit through the back. It's not your typical knitting through the front situation, in which you'd go like that. 
we're knitting through the back of that stitch like so okay so I'm gonna leave that guy in there now it's tricky because sometimes your your stuff's gonna want to get tangled but we're not gonna let it okay so again we're knitting through the back of that first stitch we're bringing our working yarn around making sure everything is in order and we are going to knit that first stitch now make sure here once we slide that off we're pulling and tugging and we're making that tight because we want that to be a tight stitch tight connection now we're going to purl the next one standard purl stitch pop him off pull to make it tight bring it around the back of the needle back to our knit position and again we're just knitting through the back bring him around pop him off okay tighten going around the front now we're purling we're doing this constantly guys this is going to be our life for about two hours now we're knitting through the back again here we go again nice now back to the front and we're purling okay we're purling hey guess what now we're knitting through the back though okay making sure to pull that yarn tight and make sure we're moving our stitches up along the needle as we need to to make things easier it's a very close stitch so you need to be very careful especially in these first few rows um, I'm gonna keep working this again all the way around I'll let you know once I've completed my first row okay and that brings us to our completed row one we will be needing 15 rows in total um, to achieve this cuff um, so we're gonna need 14 more you know I'm sorry but it's gonna have to happen it'll be fun just pop out a movie do what you gotta do make some coffee um, and yeah we're knitting through the back then we're purling then we're knitting through the back purling all 48 stitches 15 rows let's go we are back with our 15 completed rows of ribbing how was it we did knitting through the back of the needle and then purling and we were alternating that throughout our 48 stitches 15 rows again now the next part is going to be this middle wrist area in which we are just plain knitting across all stitches and we are doing that for 20 rows up until we are going to put in place markers and then we are going to start increasing for our thumb which sounds scary but it really isn't so what we're going to do for now is we're just going to coast through here and continue knitting and just knitting throughout these stitches for 20 rows here we go and I want to remind you that as we're doing this we are plain knitting through the front of the stitch like we were taught to traditionally knit we are not knitting through the back like we were doing for the ribbing we are knitting through the front like so bringing it around cast and then bringing it over to the next needle just a traditional knit again 20 rows we are back with our 20 completed knitted rows and what I've done is on the 20th row um, I have placed a stitch marker they're really just hair ties little rubber bands um, one I knitted one stitch placed the marker and then continued continued knitting all throughout and then I placed another stitch marker one stitch before the end of the round um, and that is to mark where the increases for the thumb will begin. So what we're going to do now that we have 20 rows knitted, if you already knitted 20 um, and didn't and like forgot to put the place markers in, you can just knit another round. No big deal. Not going to affect you um, in the big picture. And so now what we're going to do is we are going to increase. And to do that, we are going to do what's called a knit front back. Um, or a knit back front actually so this is how we're going to increase one stitch right here before this place marker and then we're going to knit around and then we're going to increase one more stitch after this place marker so throughout the whole round we are going to be increasing by two stitches so we're going to knit in the back just like we did with the um ribbing so we're going to pretend we're knitting we're going to pull this guy out but before what you would normally do you'd slip that this string off but we're not going to do that what we're going to do is we're going to keep it on and then we're going to continue to knit like a normal knitting through the front stitch so that you 
and then you pull it off. I'm gonna do it again just so you can see. So we are knitting through the back, wrapping around, pulling it through, but before we pull off, we're gonna knit through the front, okay? Grab him and then slide it off. And now you see we will have two stitches instead of just one. And then we're gonna slip our marker over just to denote that that's where we're increasing our stitches. And then we're just gonna continue plain knitting. And I like to use um, these little hair ties just cause they're like, if you lose them, you don't care. And I, I never remember to buy stitch markers. I don't think, I think that's an arbitrary thing. So you could just use whatever. Some people use a piece of yarn. Um, or you could count if you really want to. You can know you're working yarns there. But these little rubber bands are an easy fix. So now we're going to continue knitting around the piece. Because um, we're still wanting to build, you know, that base for the hand. But now we're just going to slowly start to increase stitches for the thumb. Okay, I am approaching our other stitch marker. And I'm going to slip it over. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier. I'm going to knit through the front. I'm going to knit through the back, excuse me, and then I'm going to knit through the front. So splitting this stitch, going through the back, knitting, pretending like I'm going to finish the stitch and slide this off, but I'm not going to. And then I'm going to bring it around the front again as if I'm knitting a whole new stitch and then slide it off, okay? See, now you have two stitches and then the place marker, the stitch marker, and then the rest of your knitting. So now we just increased by two stitches. And what we're gonna do between each row of increasing, we're gonna do a knit, um, a full row of just plain knitting, even over these increased stitches. And that'll really help seal together, um, help seal together the seam and make sure there's no holes. Because you can see, as we increase, we get a tiny hole, and you're gonna wanna offset that by a row of knitting, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do right now. These are our, this is our new stitch that we just added. I'm simply just knitting that over. Again, same thing, we're gonna just slip the marker and then continue knitting around. Um, it's gonna be very easy to track how many you're increasing by because of these markers. So you know that you started with one over on the right side of this marker, and then we just created a new one. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep going around until we have created seven additional stitches to this one stitch. So we have eight stitches on this side of the marker total. And to do that, we're just gonna knit one row, and then we're gonna increase the next row. And then we're gonna knit one row, and then we're gonna increase the next row. You'll see as we go along. All right, I am coming off of our fully knitted row with no increases after that first row where we increased. And you can see now that we, ha we have those Vs that show a knit stitch, okay? So now here comes our next round of increases. We're gonna knit through the back and then through the front again to increase. So I just knitted through the back, pull through, go through the front, and just normal knit it. And then I'm going to knit this next stitch. So now I have three instead of two. Again, we're gonna slip the marker and continue around knitting. Slipping that second marker and now going to knit through the back around that marker, pull it through, and then knit through the front to increase. And then knit this final stitch over and now we have three stitches on either side of these markers where our thumb is going to start to grow. After this, we are going to knit again, fully around with no increases, and then we're gonna knit another round where we increase on either side. We are going to do that and continue that pattern until we have eight stitches total going across here. Make sure that as you're knitting and you work your way around, um, you're always knitting, you're increasing the stitch that is closest to the stitch marker. So that way you get this nice pattern and you're always increasing in the same row and it turns into a nice sleek thumb. So right here I've just knitted or I've just slipped over my 
stitch marker and then right away I'm going to increase the um, oops got it got up I'm gonna increase with the knit back front situation um, and then I'm gonna knit those leftover guys but um, on this side it's the opposite I'm gonna knit first and then once I get to the closest one to the marker I'm going to be increasing and then slipping that marker over and this is what your piece should look like. We have a nice V here denoting our thumb increases and eight stitches on either side of the marker. Lovely. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to get rid of these thumb stitches and hold them off to the side while we knit up the rest of our mitten. Okay, so in order to have our working yarn in a functional place so we can continue using it and working it in the rest of the round. We need to continue knitting over until the place marker. So we are going to knit over all eight stitches. Now remember we started with two stitches on the inside of the place markers and we don't want to lose those stitches. So really what we're going to take is seven stitches from either side of the place marker and leave those two that we started with back in the center of our mitten, not a part of the thumb. So I knitted over all eight, but now I'm going to slip back. I'm going to slip back the um, eighth stitch. Oops. Okay, I got him. Which includes our working piece of yarn. Okay, so that's going to allow us to continue to knit over there. That being said, we have all these thumb stitches that we need to find something to do with. So what I like to do is I like to use a magic loop piece of um, cable with the needles. You could also use a darn needle and just a piece of yarn to hook them over. But what I do is I take them off and place them on this cable just to hold them. So I'm going to end up taking seven stitches because that eighth one, remember, we knitted, but then we slipped it back over to have our working yarn still functioning for us. So there we go, we have seven pieces, seven stitches. Okay, I'm gonna pull him through just so I can get to the other needle. That's why this this little um, magic loop is so handy for this part. Um, and then I'm gonna go back to this side and I'm gonna take off again seven stitches, leaving that eighth stitch where it belongs, where it initially started. Okay, so that'll leave, by doing that, it'll leave a total of 48 stitches to continue building the mitten, and then it'll leave 14 stitches, right, seven from each side, on this cable um, for us to form the thumb later after we've completed the rest of the mitten. So let's see, I have two left, so I'm going to slip one more. Okay. And that doesn't allow me to take that um, place marker off, but I'll just slip it off um, next time around. And then this cable will hold all of our thumb stitches until we are ready to work them. So now, what we can do is we can untangle our little piece of working yarn. We're going to grab our needle again. We're going to slip this guy over, right, because we already knitted him. And then we're just going to start knitting once again. And um, I have to double check, but I want to say I knitted about five rows up after the thumb. Um, you could knit, you know, five, you could knit eight, depending on how high you want it up um, on your hand. I want it to fall just below this knuckle so you can have full range of motion with those knuckles. Um, so you can stop and try it on and see if you like the way it's fitting. Um, and then just take it into account, you're going to have about an inch inch and a quarter more um, with the ribbing. But for right now, we're just gonna continue knitting around and building up that mitten. Now that we have our increases for the thumb all taken care of and stowed away to the side. And I just wanted to show you guys how um, you're gonna have to kind of make a stretch right here as you continue to knit to close this hole. Um, it's gonna be uncomfortable at first because it's such a large gap but we're gonna fill that in later by picking up a couple stitches just to fill in the holes and um, once we knit up that thumb, you're really not gonna be able to tell. But what you're gonna wanna do here is make it as tight as possible, this stitch, so that these two 
are very close together. We want to pull all that loose thread out. Okay, before we knit and then continue knitting around. You see how I made that nice and tight so that there's not a lot of space in between and then as you keep knitting up, you'll be able to build that and it won't be as tense as it is right now. Right now there's a lot of tension. Um, so I just wanted to show you that. But again, I'm gonna continue knitting up five rows above um, where we just took off those thumbs. So I've just completed our five rows of knitting. Again, feel free to adjust this based off of how your mitten is fitting you or the person you're making it for. I just wanna try it on really quick to show you how this thumb, oh my gosh, so lovely, how it's gonna play out. Um, and you can see I'm, I've built up a nice base here. This is where um, I want it to fall because I know that that ribbing is gonna come up to about here and I wanna be able to bend those knuckles um, outside of the mitten. So I'm super happy with that. And now I am going to start again with the ribbing. And if you remember from earlier, all it is, it's a simple knitting through the back and then purling in the front. And we're just gonna continue that for again, the same 15 rows to achieve an equal amount of ribbing on the top and the bottom of the mitten. Here comes our last cast off, bind off. Cut our end and voila, we will weave that in later. But for now, Let's get started on the thumb. And what we're going to do to begin is we are going to move these 14 stitches over to our needle that is patiently waiting. And now we're just going to move them over back onto our working needles. I'm going to move over five stitches to one and then I'm gonna grab another and move over four and then I'm gonna grab another and move over the last five and now we are ready to work our thumb amazing we have these double pointed needles again to help us form a circle and knit in the round. Oh my gosh, it looks great. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see better how we're going to pick up stitches. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go along this row that's right along the outside of the um, hole and we are going to stab in to the nearest stitch. Not the nearest, I would say it's the second stitch over. So you pick up this bar that is in between the V of the stitch. Okay, I'll show you where I found that. So maybe there's another bar down here, but I wanna, I wanna go up here because I only wanna pick up four stitches total to help close this hole. So this stitch here will be a perfect addition I'm just gonna slip it over to this needle. It's a little tight because I'm making a new stitch um, for knitting and see how well that picks up. And it just creates a new row right where it should be. We're gonna find one more on this side to add on to this needle. I'm gonna pick up him right there. Right, we're just picking up that bar in between those stitches. And then I'm gonna slip him onto this needle. Okay, now we're gonna go over to the other side of the thumb and pick up two more stitches to even that out. Okay, so I'm gonna take him right there. You see, open up, open up these stitches. We're gonna stab into the V and then pick up that bar stitch and slide it onto our needle so we can free up this needle again to stab into our last stitch. See how there's kind of a gap right there? 
I'm not going to want to skip over that. I'm going to want to try to close that. So I'm going to pull up that first stitch right there. Slide them onto there. And you can see how lovely that's going to look. Just looks right into a line. And then these will sew, seam together very nicely. And we will have no holes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these three needles. Just like the body of our mitten, I'm going to work in um, about five rounds. Depends on your thumb. This one has five rounds of knitting. Um, depends on how long you want, how much you want your thumb to be covered. Um, but remember, we're going to have to do some cuff. This cuff's optional. You don't have to continue. Um, you could just knit to the top and then cast off. It's totally up to you, but I like it just because it adds a little bit of embellishment. So I'm going to need another, you know, centimeter of ribbing. So I'm going to keep that in mind as I knit up these five rows of the thumb. All right. So I'm going to grab my yarn. Start on this side. I'm going to stick my needle through as if I'm about to knit. And I'm going to take this scrap, this um, piece of working yarn. I'm going to have the end facing inward so I can seam that right into the back of the thumb later. And then I'm just going to start knitting. And it's going to be loose at first, so you're going to want to pull through this other end the first few stitches. But you're just going to pick up your yarn right where you left off and knit around in the round. Now I'm going to continue by knitting four to five rows of the ribbing, which is knitting through the back and purling, and then alternating that around and then casting off once you are satisfied with the length it is on your thumb. So now I'm just going to finish up by weaving in these ends here, and you can do this whichever way you want. I like to find a place in the knitting that I can mimic the pattern and hide the piece of yarn. This is a very long end, so I'm gonna end up cutting some of it off, but I like to just weave my way down on these mittens in the ribbing, and then like on the lower part, I'll weave my way up and then um, hide away this piece of yarn. Just be careful not to rough up that cuff too much, and then don't forget that you also have a piece of yarn inside from when we added that. Um, piece to start up the thumb, so just take care of all those ends. If you don't have a tight um, beginning, like you can see down here it's kind of uneven, the part where we weave in the ends is the perfect time to even that out by stitching this through underneath here and um, allowing you to kind of make that a little bit more seamless. There you have it guys, that is a lovely pair of fingerless mittens. Thank you so much for watching. I am Let's Get Knit Faced. Please like and subscribe.